Hi there, DW Berman here, and I'm just going to show off this uh, AE Link plugin. It's because I think it's really cool. It uh, fills a workflow gap that uh, Lightwave has had for a while. Uh, AE Link is a plugin that syncs from Lightwave to After Effects. There are a number of reasons why you'd want to do this. One is to better integrate your 3D scene into After Effects. Another is just to say, hey, you know, I don't like working in 3D and After Effects because it's a pain in the butt. So, uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. I have this simple scene here in Lightwave. I have a bunch of lights arranged as a heart. They're just point lights. And I have a spotlight up, up top. And these lights just kind of move up and down. The camera rotates over. Let me just show you this in a camera view. Just rotates over. The only things in this scene right now are the camera, these lights that you see on screen, plus the spotlight, and uh, two nulls. Well, three nulls if you count the camera target. So I have a floor null, and you notice over here I added an AE link panel over here. Um, important thing since we're dealing with lights, if you go to the link AE link configs, you want to make sure it export scope is set to complete so it sends lights over as well and light types are fully supported as far as I know are most fully supported in uh, in After Effects 5.5 CS 5.5 um, earlier versions might not be able to set the light types I think was uh, a limitation but AE Link works with uh, I believe CS 4 all the way up to the latest version and also works in Lightwave you know 9 through 11. So we're pretty well supported. Um, you notice that uh, I have these buttons over here for AE Link, and I also have a uh, and custom object for AE Link. And that is about all there is to this plugin. The the author uh, really tried to make it super simple and easy to use. So that's that's what we have. I have a floor null. And I'm going to add AE Link layer type to that. And you see I have AE Link solid, 100 by 100. That's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. I want this to be a floor, so I want this to be bigger. I'm just going to make it 2,000 pixels. And I'm going to change the color of it to a blue, because I prefer blue floors for whatever reason. Uh, it's just a nicer color than the green. The green is... You know, it stands out, and if you want to replace it with something else later, or key through it, you can do that. So here's my huge, uh, what will be a solid in After Effects. And I'm going to rotate that down to uh, 90 degrees, so it's just a flat floor plane. And uh, let's see, I have another... I'm going to move it just a little bit, just so it's out of the way. And I have another null called Text. And this null, if I zoom way in, you can see it's this null right here. This uh, just kind of rotates. Let me see. It rotates. This is also on the 90 degrees on the pitch, and it also rotates on the heading. So I'm going to add the AE link layer type to that. In this case, I'm going to double click it. I'm going to make this a text layer. And this is going to be, well, I'll just leave that AE link. Ah. I'll change it up. AE plus LW. And that is uh, my current scene setup. It's nothing spectacular, obviously. It's just a bunch of lights and nulls. The lights move up and down, the camera rolls over, the spotlight opens up, but there really isn't anything to see. And if I, you know, render this out using the viewport renderer, you don't see anything because there are no objects in the scene. So this is just to quickly block out something in uh, Lightwave to use in After Effects. So let me click the magic button, the AE sync scene, and it launches After Effects. And it basically what it does is it saves a script, and uh, here it is. Here's my scene in uh, After Effects. Here's my solid that the that we made. Now uh, these uh, 
point lights that I made ha have a uh, fall off on them and it looks like they're looking way too bright so something needs to change but that's okay it's easy to do let me change my uh, there we go fit up to 100% there we go and I'll drop the uh, well I'll keep the resolution at defaults at auto So you can see the uh, lights are super bright, and the point lights are moving up and down. So when they are closest to the floor, that's when they are the smallest. Now you can imagine if I actually had, if you could actually see the lights in After Effects, how cool would that be? Well, that's very possible with a couple of plugins, a uh, trap code. Um, trap code. Uh, this Trapcode Suite has a plugin called Lux, which will uh, put uh, basically a little point of light on any light source, and you could also do uh, cones of light for uh, basically a, a cheap way to do volumetric lighting. And you can also get uh, Video Copilot's optical flares that will also put a visible uh, light point, light thing on on your lights. So it would be very cool you could actually see these points of light as they uh, bounce up and down but I don't have those plugins right now so uh, you have to put up with this <laughs> um, but like I said this is actually a, a syncing program a syncing plugin so I can change things in Lightwave and have it update in After Effects and I can prove that by let's, let's say go to the spotlight here well all these lights seem a little bright so let me go to the uh, scene editor Select all these lights. I don't need to select this light. I always do that. Uh, I can select all of these lights here, light color, and I'm going to change them to whatever color that is, a huge, ugly pink. Apply. And I'm also going to turn the intensity down. They're too bright. And I have a, a fall off applied as well. You may not have known that. So there we have made the changes to my scene. I hit this uh, magic button again, AE Sync Scene, and there we go, we have pink lights. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now the floor is still a blue. If I come down here to my floor and all, you can see it's still blue. That's why it's more purple than uh, pink. You can see I have a text there. Let me duplicate this text layer in After Effects. And I'll, uh, let's see now. Let me pause this. Okay, I decided to just do things a little differently. So uh, I have this text and text two layer. I can uh, turn this little wing thing down and uh, go to my text. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the text one layer. Um, so now I have source text showing up here and source text showing up here. If I alt click on the little stopwatch, it adds an expression. I can just grab this pick whip thing and drag up to source text from the second layer to the first layer and uh, it's added it. So now whenever I change the text on the first layer, it'll uh, automatically change it on the second one. Uh, I also want to parent the uh, second layer to the first one. Okay, now when I drag the uh, second layer down, you'll see I have another copy of it. Let me s zoom in here. I'll just move it down a little bit. And uh, let me duplicate this layer by Control D or Command D if you're on the Mac. So now I have a text 3. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just, you know, building up my uh, I want text I'm just building up a fake 3D there's uh, some scripts you can get to kind of automate this process I don't know how well they work with this particular method since we don't have the uh, text in its own layer I haven't tried working with pre-comps yet but now that I have a few of these I can just uh, 
grab a bunch of them and copy them and move them down. I'll do that now. This is just to kind of do a fakey 3D. So duplicate. Scroll them down. Just so they're close together. And on the bottom layer, whichever one is the most, whatever one is the lowest, be nice if I had them in order. I'll say that's the lowest. On this one I'm going to uh, edit the materials of this object and I'm going to tell it to cast shadows. So now it casts shadows. And uh, let's see, I don't want all of those other lights to cast shadows because that just takes a while to render. Let me go back to fit up to 100. See, I don't want all of these lights to cast shadows, so I'm going to edit them in here as well. Let me just select all. And on the lights, cast shadows, I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to try to turn it off. There we go. But I do want it on for the uh, spotlight, so I'll have to change the spotlight too. I select all, close them up. Now I can go down to the, uh, find the spotlight. There's the spotlight. Light, uh, cast shadows on, and I'll turn up the shadow diffusion so there's softer shadows. Uh, looks like I have an accident. What layer is that? That's probably the first layer, of course. Uh, what happened is that it's based on the name. And let me look at my light wave scene, make sure it's named the same. No, I... I'm looking at text. Text. Text, text, text. Well, let's uh, AE sync scene and see what happens. Did that wait? Let me not. Let me wait. Look at this one more time. I'm thinking I just don't have these other ones. Nope, oh, they are parented to text. And text is moving. Are these other ones moving? Oh, that was the problem. I duplicated these without clearing their animation. So let me uh, hit the rotation tool and just uh, make sure I kill it on all of those. And uh, let me just set all these back to zero. So now it should follow the, uh, the first one. There we go, a little troubleshooting for you. Free of charge. <laughs> so let's see what this looks like now. Obviously, if they were closer together, you could uh, more readily buy that they were a solid 3D object and not just a stack of thin layers, but eh, what are you going to do? So there the spotlights go below or behind the text, and now our main, not spotlights, the uh, point lights go below. Now our spotlight's on. Spotlight's a bit bright too, I think, so let's uh, do something about that. Again, I could change it in After Effects, but then if I make any other updates to the Lightwave scene, then that will get undone and I have to do it all over again. So I'll just change it in the Lightwave scene. So, Lights, Spotlight, let's make it 80%, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it that color. But you notice that I have all these other point lights here. What happens if I made them Spotlights? So let's, uh, let's check that out. Let's go to this little thing here, lights. Select all my lights, P for properties, and let's make them all spotlights. See if that works. See if this is something I can mass change. Nope, I can't change them all at once. So let's go to my scene editor where I know I can do that. Okay, let's make these all spotlights. 
spot, spot, spot. Of course, they're not l pointed in the correct direction. So let's uh, do something about that. Go back to 0, Y for rotate. Let's kind of rotate them all down. Of course, they're animated because uh, the way I did the keyframes. So let's clear out the graph on those. Of course, the rotation might be cool animated. So let's kind of keep that somewhat. Yeah, I'll just do a little quickie animation. <laughs> I only changed it on one. <sighs> Super. Oh, they're all selected. Let me just clear all these out. Delete keys. I, yeah. I just killed my animation, didn't I? Oh, well. Raise it up, lower it down, raise it up, raise it up higher this time, and lower it down. Let's see what that looks like. So now we have a completely different look. I where that one is. I think it looks like I forgot to change the color on the one. That's kind of cool looking, actually. I wonder if I can change the uh, color of the spotlight. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna make a couple changes here. I'm gonna make a couple changes. First thing, you can imagine having two monitors, uh, having After Effects on one monitor and Lightwave on the other. You can just readily see what's updating at the same time. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, scene editor. Let's make some changes to these spotlights. Um, light type basic. Type basic. Cone angle. I want the soft cone. I'm going to raise that up to be. Uh, I want to soften the cone a bit. Make it 18. And um, the other thing I want to do is why make the camera a little bit wider because it's a little too close. So let's go. Do do do. Um, focal length 18 millimeters. Is that better? You know what, I didn't move the uh, camera target at the right time either, so there we go. Let's see how that works. And so far I haven't even saved anything, this is all just live editing. And that one spotlight on the bottom I think is a different color, so I want to change that too. Maybe this one here, properties, yeah that's not at all the other colors. It's like a... That's still not the right color, but closer. And let's do a little preview. And you get the idea. I can, you know, make changes in Lightwave and have them easily show up in uh, After Effects. Whereas before, this kind of back and forth, or I guess...